diffusion. If you've ever drunk cordial or sprayed some air freshener in a room, you've experienced diffusion. Diffusion is simply particles that move from an area of high concentration, such as down here, to an area of low concentration here. You can see that in this section here, there's lots of these blue particles, so it's highly concentrated. And over here, there's no blue particles. So this is a low concentration. And what will happen is these particles will just move from the high concentrated area to the low concentrated area. And this is called diffusion. And this will continue happening until a uniform concentration is achieved. So a little bit like spraying the air freshener in the room. It smells really strong in one area at the start, but after about 10 minutes, the entire room smells about the same because a uniform concentration is achieved. This occurs across cell membranes, and this is one of the ways in which gas particles exchange both across cell membranes and across alveoli. You see looking at this here, the particles all started off on one side and they'll continue to diffuse across, so from high concentration to low concentration, until there are even concentrations. So what happens in the alveoli? When we breathe in, we breathe in lots of oxygen particles as well as other gases, but we're going to focus on the oxygen here. The blood's coming from the heart, where it is high in carbon dioxide. So this is high in carbon dioxide, and this is low in carbon dioxide. So diffusion means it'll move from high concentration to low concentration. And this is the way carbon dioxide moves into the alveoli. Oxygen is in high concentration, so it moves from high concentration to where it's in low concentration. So it will move out of the lungs and into the blood supply. So we get this happening. So now the blood coming away from the lungs is going to be high in oxygen and that goes back towards the heart to be pumped around the body and this is higher now in the lungs of carbon dioxide and we breathe out that carbon dioxide. So this blood now goes to, from the heart, or back to the heart and then goes to cells. And remember in cells, we have this little tiny organelle called mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, glucose and oxygen react to make energy plus carbon dioxide and water. And this is called cellular respiration. This is where all of our cells get their energy. So if we look at a cell and the cell in the mitochondria is performing cellular respiration. So it's using up oxygen and it's making carbon dioxide. So the cell will be high in carbon dioxide molecules. So the blood which is coming from the heart will be high in oxygen and the cell is high in carbon dioxide. Remember diffusion says that oxygen will move from an area of high concentration here into the cell which is low concentration. So it'll move in this direction, whereas carbon dioxide will move from an area of high concentration inside of the cell, out of the cell. So we will have this happening. The bloodstream will get lots of carbon dioxide moving into it, and the cell has oxygen moving into it. And off the high carbon dioxide, blood goes back to the heart to get removed again from the lungs, and here the cell has oxygen so it can perform more cellular respiration. So from the heart, we go back to the alveoli. We breathe in, we get oxygen. That carbon dioxide concentrated blood comes back, it moves into the alveoli, and we then breathe that out again, the carbon dioxide. This high concentrated oxygen blood goes to cells to perform cellular respiration and the carbon dioxide then or the oxygen moves from the blood into the cell and the carbon dioxide moves out of the cell into the blood high concentration to low concentration called diffusion and this blood then goes back to the heart to go back to the lungs. 
Now when you look at both alveoli and cells, you'll notice that they're very small and that there's many of them. And there's a reason for this. This is to get maximum or a large surface area to volume ratio. And having a large surface area to volume ratio will maximise the exchange of gas that can occur. So the bigger this ratio, the more gas exchange that can occur. So what am I talking about when I say surface area to volume ratio? If we have a look at a cube, which is 4 by 4 centimetres, it'll have a volume of 16 centimetres cubed. If I cut that cube into 8 2 centimetre pieces, it's still going to have a volume of 16 centimetres. But look what happens with the surface area. So this cube here is 4 centimetres by 4 centimetres. Each face has got an area of 4 by 4, which is 16 centimetres squared. It's got 6 faces, so it's 6 times 16 centimetres squared, which is a total of 96 centimetres squared as this cube surface area. This cube though, each face is 2 by 2 centimetres, so it becomes 4 centimetres. Each cube has 6 faces, so 6 times 4 equals 24 centimetres squared, but there's 8 cubes. So 8 cubes times each one having a surface area of 24 centimetres squared equals a total of 192 centimetres squared. So even though this cube and this cube have the same volume of 16 centimetres cubed, this one only has a surface area of 96 centimetres squared, whereas this one has a much higher surface area of 192 centimetres squared. When you think of surface area to volume ratio, think about a cube of sugar. If you were to put this cube of sugar into your cup of tea, it would take a lot longer to dissolve than would a teaspoon of sugar, which is crushed in the smaller pieces. This is because in the teaspoon, there's a lot more surface area for the water to dissolve. 